What is Zapier? It does a lot of things, but if I were to sum it up, Zapier allows you to connect the apps you use so that they can work together. And it's simple to use, but very powerful because it allows you to add logic and AI on top of that to orchestrate all of your apps to work together. You know, as a business owner, this is the one tool in my arsenal that I've been paying to use for the longest since 2018, even though I can code and I can build my own integrations. So thank you Zapier for sponsoring this video so that I can talk about a tool that's so deeply ingrained into Code with Chris. Now, before I show you how it works and how you can benefit from it, let me give you some inspiration by showing you how I use it and why I find it so essential. If you're a business owner or entrepreneur, you're probably already using specialized apps for all of the different functions in your business. For example, at Code with Chris, we use a website builder, we have an e-commerce shopping cart, we have an email list software, we have a learning platform for our courses and many more. They are all the best at what they do, but the problem is they don't talk to each other. That's where Zapier comes in. It allows me to easily create connections between these different apps so that I can focus on what I do best instead of wrestling with integrations. For example, someone visits my site, decides that my program is right for them, and then they check out using my shopping cart software. Zapier then triggers and creates an account for them on my learning platform and enrolls them into the right courses. Zapier then also adds the student's email to my email list software so that they can stay informed. And then Zapier executes some logic to decide whether or not the student needs a forum account. If they do, it's gonna go ahead and create an account on my forum software. Then when the student starts taking the courses and they reach certain milestones, Zapier triggers and works with my email software to send the student an email to congratulate them. Zapier also logs their milestone into my CRM so that I have student metrics and I can follow up with students personally. Now I could go on, but you get the idea. And you might think that what I described sounds really complex to set up, but it actually isn't, it's quite simple. So let me walk you through how it works step-by-step. Step. So to get started, click on the link in the upper right-hand corner or the link in the description below the video. You're gonna arrive at this page and I want you to click on start free with email, this big orange button. If you don't see this, go ahead and click on sign up in the upper right-hand corner. Both will bring you to a sign up page. The brilliant thing with Zapier is that you can use it for free, even beyond the 14 day trial that they're talking about their premium tier. A lot of other tools after the trial period, they stop and they don't let you use it anymore, but not Zapier. It's got a free plan that you can continue to use. So I really like that. Once you enter in your email address and your name, hit get started for free and you're going to arrive at a homepage that looks like this. First of all, I wanna call out how easy Zapier makes it for you to get started. There's this big AI text box here that you can just type in the idea or the integration you have in mind and Copilot is gonna go and try and create that for you. But I believe knowledge is power and I wanna teach you how to do it by hand and then you can use AI in the future to create your own Zaps. Also take note that everything we've talked about so far is what they call a Zap and that is a workflow or an automation or an integration, all of these are meaning the same thing. They also have other features like tables, interfaces, chatbots, canvas, agents, and more. But what we're working with right now are Zaps. So go ahead and hit create right here, and we are going to create an automated workflow called a Zap. Now, I'm not gonna presume that I know what apps you're using in your business, but I will show you some general steps, and then we're gonna do an example. So all Zaps start with a trigger there's something that happens in one of the apps that you use that is gonna kick off this automated workflow. So step one is to decide which app is going to trigger this workflow. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, again, I don't know which apps that you are connecting, but Zapier has over 7,000 apps that it works with. As an example, I am going to use the scenario I gave you earlier where someone buys my course through my e-commerce shopping cart and that event that purchase is going to be the trigger for this workflow. So what I use is Sam cart and then choose that. Step two is to choose the event in that app that actually triggers and kicks off this workflow. So we're going to go ahead and choose the trigger. I'm going to choose new order. So when someone places an order that is going to kick off this workflow. Now this part, you are going to have to connect Zapier with that app so that Zapier has authorization to detect events in that app under your account. 
So go ahead and hit select or setup. I've already set up um, a connection to SamCart. Um, this is going to be a little bit different for every single app. But if you hit connect a new account, it's going to walk you through the instructions. And a lot of the time, if you're already logged in to the app, it's just a simple hitting accept. Okay, so I'm not going to do that because I've already set that up. I'm just going to go ahead and select my account. Okay, then you're going to hit continue. And there may be some additional configuration options for this example with the e-commerce shopping cart. It's saying that, do you want this to trigger on a specific product that is purchased? And here I can select that. Now I'm just going to hit continue. And now it's going to attempt to grab some test data. Don't worry, it's not going to actually do anything with your account. It's just fetching some test data so that we can test this trigger. So it's got a couple of orders that have been placed recently. If I click into one of these, I can see some details of that, including the customer information. Now what we're doing here is we're selecting an order to test with. So I'm going to choose the first order, order C, and we just hit continue with record. Okay, so the next step is to do something with that trigger. Now, in this case, what I'd want to do is take the person that's bought the product and enroll them in that specific course inside my learning platform. And I happen to be using a learning platform called Thinkific. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Same thing applies here. Instead of a trigger, though, you're going to select an action to do. In this case, the action would be enrolling a student into a course. I'm going to select enroll user. And again, if you haven't set up the account allowing Zapier to take actions on your Thinkific account, this is where you can do that. Since I've already done that, I'm going to go ahead and select my account. And then I'm going to hit continue. Now here I can configure the action that I'm going to take. So which course do I want to enroll this user into? As you can see, when I click into it, Zapier actually goes into my learning platform and retrieves the courses so that I can go ahead and select something here. Now, in terms of the first name and last name in the email, how am I going to get that information? That was in the order data through Sandcart. Well, in Zapier, not only can we perform actions, but we can also pass data from one app to the next, which makes this insanely useful. So the way this works is you just press forward slash and you can choose the information from previous steps in your workflow. Here you can see the first step is a new order being placed inside SamCart. As you can see, I have my customer's first name here. So I would go ahead and select this and put it there. And then I would repeat this for the last name and I would repeat this for the email. So I've gone ahead and done that. Now I'm just going to hit continue and you can actually test this action right now if you hit test step and it's going to attempt to enroll the student into the course. However, I'm going to skip the test and that's perfectly fine too. And then what I can do is just hit publish. If I had additional actions to perform, I could just hit this plus button and add steps. If I wanted to add some logic in between the trigger and the action, I would also hit add step and I could do that. Now I want to call your attention to this step right here, AI by Zapier. This is a really cool step that allows you to use AI to make decisions or sort data, format data, anything like that. So that's really cool. But I'm not going to do that right now because I just want to show you a very simple example. And to end it off, what you would do is you would name your zap first. So it might be uh, enroll student from order. And then I would just go ahead and hit publish. And now my zap would be live. And anytime someone places an order through my shopping cart software, it would then enroll the user into my learning platform. Now you might be wondering why I'd need this specific integration because actually Thinkific has its own payment system. And believe it or not, my e-commerce shopping cart software has the ability for me to upload courses to it. And so that brings me to that saying, Jack of all trades, master of none. Obviously this tool specializes in checkout software and sales pages. It doesn't give me a lot of features for courses, even though it's got that bare bones functionality. Same thing goes for Thinkific. It's got basic checkout options and limited customization options for my sales pages, but it's got 
all of the bells and whistles for learning and quizzes and courses and things like that. So I want to use the best in class software for each function in my business. And using Zapier, I can orchestrate these apps to work together. So how is Zapier actually doing this? Let's take a minute to see what's happening behind the scenes so that you can appreciate the time and effort that you're saving. And also you'll see why I don't code my own integrations. Now each app has what's called an API. Think of it like a gateway and it allows you to send a request to access the data or perform some action in that app. Thing is the API has a very strict set of rules that your request has to follow. Now these rules are usually documented in pages of technical text. And if I were to code this integration myself, I would have to read, understand it, and then make sure that the request that I code follows those rules. That would be fine, except that every API is different. So if I wanted two apps to work together, that's at least two sets of API documentation that I have to read and understand and code for. And that's not even the worst of it. Over time, APIs change, they get updated, and your requests that were working now may not work anymore because of new updated rules. Then you'd have to go and read the updated rules and fix your requests so that that integration can work again. So not only is there an upfront effort to code the integration, but there is an ongoing effort to maintain it. When you make a connection between two apps in the Zapier visual drag and drop interface, you're done in less than a minute. But Zapier is actually handling all of that API stuff behind the scenes. And oh yeah, when the API changes, Zapier handles that for you automatically. So you don't have to worry about your integrations not working. Now I want to show you one of the real workflows that is powering my business. Check it out. If I go to my Zap history and for the past 30 days, if I go to task usage, I've got thousands of tasks automated and it's pretty insane. Okay, let's take a real look at an example. So let's go to my folders. Let's go to CWC plus. Let's go to created a CWC account. So this workflow is triggered when a new account is created on my website. And then there's some logic that happens. Now this logic decides whether or not it should just alert me on Slack. If it's something that I need to follow up with. Maybe it's a request for a consultation or something like that. Or if it's actually an order, like a student trying to sign up. In that case, Drip is the email software that I use. We create that person as a new subscriber and we trigger a workflow that would kick off a, a beginner email series that gets sent to that user. And there is some formatting that goes on with their email address here as an additional step. And then we try to determine whether or not that user is already a member of our CWC plus training program. So that's why there's some logic going on here. And if they are, do they need a new forum account? And so then there's different tasks to do that. So as you can see, a workflow can take many steps and make many decisions. This saves me a ton of time because it performs so many different actions on my behalf from an account creation. Otherwise, I'd have to do all of these different things manually. So I think it's time that you take a look at your own business or projects and see how much time you can save by automating certain parts of it. And the great thing is that when I was creating these apps and using this back in 2018, we didn't have AI. We didn't have this co-pilot here that makes it so easy for you to set up your own integrations. There's a lot more to Zapier than what I covered today. For example, Zapier tables and interfaces allow you to quickly and easily set up forms to capture information. Zapier MCP powers up your AI tools by giving them secure access to all the other apps that you use. And as luck would have it, Zapier recently updated all of their plans to include Zaps, Tables, Interfaces, and MCP. So you have everything you need to build complete AI-powered systems free from add-ons. If you want me to do some videos on these other Zapier features and how they can improve your productivity or business, let me know, drop a comment below. All right, so today you learned what Zapier is, how simple it is to use, and how much time it can save you. To get started and create your free account, just click on the link up there or check out the link in the description below the video. And finally, if you want to see me use Zapier to build an AI-powered calorie tracker app with no code, check out this video over here. Or if you want to see me use Zapier and AI to uncover profitable app ideas on autopilot, you can check out this video right over here. All right, I'll see you there.